Welcome to Texas State University's Chemistry 2030 Introduction to Organic Chemistry. I'm your guide, Dr. David Irvin. Today we will start Chapter 5, Part 1, Reactions of Alkenes and Alkynes. Okay, so in this chapter we're going to learn a lot of different reactions with alkenes. A lot of them are going to be adding something across that double bond we created. We're going to add HCl or HBr across there in what we call a hydrohalogenation, where we have a hydrogen and a halogen we add across. We're also going to do what we call hydration, or adding water across the double bond. So we're adding water, which is a hydrator, so we're going to hydrate that. We're going to add either a bromine or a chlorine across that double bond, and that would be called a halogenation. That's where we have a bromine on each of the carbons that had a double bond, or a chlorine on each of the carbons there. We're also going to do a compound, uh, a, an addition reaction called a hydroboration. And typically when you do hydroboration, we actually uh, do a, an additional reaction on it to turn it into an alcohol. And we'll get to that. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add just hydrogen across that double bond, taking it all the way from an alkene all the way down to an alkane. Okay, but to do that, before we do that, we need to talk about how reactions work and what we call the energy diagram. An energy diagram just kind of gives you an idea of what's happening in the reaction and the energy associated with it. So if we look at the y-axis here, that's the energy that the different molecules have to go through to get along the reaction coordinate. So when we start here at our xy here, coordinate here. We're starting with the starting materials and then they have a certain amount of energy associated with them, either uh, the kinetic energy, um, the potential energy they have in them. And then they have to add energy to get them to go from their neutral state to some transition state. Some change is happening here. And then it comes down and either uh, releases energy and we get the heat of reaction or is absorbing energy in the system. And we see that at the end of the trail here. So let's take those a little bit stepwise now. So again, we start where our materials are just uh, neutral species. And if we kept them in individual bottles, nothing would happen. And now that first step of the reaction is when we added those reagents together. And the heat of either adding heat to the reaction by heating it up or uh, by just uh, allowing them to use the natural energy. And we can actually start adding energy to the different compounds such that they hit this state where they begin to react. Okay, This is a transition state and that's where you, you have your compound first start making a bond with the reactant and then whatever other component on that reactant has to leave is starting to break that bond. And then as we come down this activation energy, we end up getting to our products of our newly formed bond between the reactant and the starting material and our product of the reaction. So if we look at the energy it takes to get to that state where they begin to react, they begin to form that partial bond, we call that the activation energy. You must have enough heat or other energy in there to get the reaction to start to take place. Okay, The difference between the energy of where your starting materials are and where your product is, is called the heat of reaction. If heat is released, we call that a positive heat of reaction. Uh, if heat is released, that means we can have heat come out of the reaction. If heat is absorbed, we actually can show that in our energy diagram as well. Now, one interesting thing to note is this transition state isn't isolatable. It is something that just happens intermediate between the, the immediately between the reaction happening and, the re, and going to products. Okay, so let me further define these. A transition state is an unstable species at that max energy of the peak there. Okay, it happens for a split second, individual molecules hit this transition state and either go back to starting materials or go to product. That's the only two options it has. And so it's this momentaneous, instantaneous point in space where the molecules actually making and breaking a bond at the same time. The activation energy is the energy it takes to get the reactants up to that energy state, okay? If that activation energy is really high, it's going to take longer for the reaction to 
progress because it's taking more time for the molecules to get to that energy. So that usually means that a high activation energy slows the reaction down. A low, a, a low activation energy will have a very quick reaction. And it all has to do with the number of collisions that actually have the energy required. So if it's a very large, only a couple of them are going to be hitting where they have enough energy, and therefore only a few are going to happen at a time. If we have a whole bunch of collisions happening and they all have the energy required, it's going to happen faster because more of the molecules are going to cascade down to products more easily. So think about a high barrier, it's the reaction's going to go slowly. A low barrier, the reaction's going to go quickly. Okay. So the change in the heat of reaction is the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. If the reaction releases energy, meaning the products have less energy than the starting materials, we have an exothermic reaction. We liberate heat. The potential energy that was stored in those molecules is given away as heat as we make the products. If we actually have the energy of those products above the energy of the starting material, then we have what we call an endothermic reaction. Heat was absorbed to make this. Note the activation energy is always higher than the final products here. So we had to add that extra energy to meet that transition state to get to here. But the net difference between the starting material and the products is that endothermic or absorbed heat, okay? So, there's also another way to do this is to have what we can call a two-step reaction. In a two-step reaction, we have an initial activation energy that creates our first transition state, and we actually generate a product, an intermediate, okay? It's not our product. It is halfway to our product. And then that intermediate has to go through a second activation energy to get to our product. So when we have a two-step reaction, we'll see two humps and we'll have an intermediate here in the middle, okay? The difference between a transition state and an intermediate is the transition state is an instantaneous, almost theoretical condition where a bond is forming and a bond is breaking. An intermediate is actually something you can trap and see. So an intermediate is an actual compound that exists in a certain amount in that reaction before it goes through the second transition state. And again, this second transition state is this, you know, infinitesimal time or this almost mythical state where it's going, a new bond is forming and a new bond is breaking before we cascade down to our product. In this case, we call it an exothermic reaction because the heat of the products is lower than the heat of the starting material, meaning we gave heat off in the reaction. If this cascaded down and ended up here, that would indicate we have an endothermic reaction because we had heat absorbed by the products compared with the heat energy in the starting materials. Okay, so again, to reiterate, the reaction intermediate is a a highly reactive species, but it can be isolated, okay? The intermediate cannot be isolated. It's this inner, it's this, um, the transition state is just happening instantaneously and cannot be isolated. The intermediate can be isolated. That's the big difference between transition state and intermediate. Typically, the rate determining step is the highest energy barrier. Whichever energy barrier is the highest of that activation energy tends to be the slow step in a reaction. Most of the time, it is the first step in the reaction. 